Good evening. We thank you for being in the tabernacle tonight. We thank those that will watch it live or even watch it take delay uh, later on in the week. We're here in Lewiston, Woodville. It's growing together ministry here in the tabernacle. We thank you. We thank you. Without you, there will be no growing together ministry. Amen. Amen. Without you, the thousands that watch over the world, there will be no growing together ministry. Right. You are important. Whether we met you or whether we have not met you, if we never physically met you, you're still important to this ministry. Yes, God. Right. Every time you click, of the program, whether you watch it one minute or the whole program, you are important and we love you. The most important, God loves you. Praise yes, God. Amen. 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 Uh, <clears throat> I got some scriptures. God, God, God's put a twist in this. That's okay. Uh, uh, I was thinking about our tongue. Uh, this is not in my text, but one scripture says the tongue is unruly and full of deadly poison. Yeah, no man can tame the tongue, yeah, but God can. Yes, he can. Uh, we all in our lives, if we would talk to everyone in the tabernacle and you that's watching online, would talk the times that we put our foot in our mouth because of our yes. tongue. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Lord, have yes, mercy. Yes, Lord, have mercy. But I want to talk on the positive side of the tongue opposed to the negative tonight. So, uh, I want to read about three scriptures before I actually go to my text. So I'm not going to give you my text yet. I'll give you turning to that real quick. But I want to read uh, how many times uh, a, a situation has happened in your life or my life and something negative when I say negative, it could, it could be a uh, medical condition, uh, it could be a financial issue, it could be a, uh, a spouse issue or ch child, it could be all work-related or whatever, that we have said negative things from our mouth about the situation. I'll never get out of this situation. It'll never work out. I'm at the end of my road. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. We've all said that. Yeah. But I want to read Proverbs 18.21, which says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Preach. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. So you can speak life to yourself mm -hmm. or someone else, or you can speak death to yourself or to someone else. Amen. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. Christians who caught this is the note I wrote down. Christians who constantly talk doubt, in effect, talk death. Mm. That's right. Amen. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Amen. We talk doubt. We talk death. Mm. Well, I don't have the faith for this thing. Mm. This is this is a, a. We've all had mountains in our life or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to say this online. Oh. We went in a financial crisis. Uh, I can't remember what year it was. 2005 or six, And we had to file bankruptcy. And uh, someone was living in our house at the time that we owned at that time and ran up a, over a thousand dollar light bill because the light bill was still in my name. Well, when I went through the bankruptcy, I did not list, I thought I listed that electric bill on the bill. I, I don't like my personal stuff, but I, I'm going to share it, but this will help somebody. That's the only reason I'm sharing. Well, we were living in my mom's house taking care of her and my dad, he died, and then Five, four or five years later, my mom died, 2010. So we were gonna put the house up for sale, my mom's dad's house, my two sisters, we decided to sell the property. Now I've got to move out of the house where we took, take it. My mom and dad was on Medicaid and Medicare. And we, uh, social services said if you move them in your house, uh, they will lose their Medicaid status. Not Medicare, Medicaid, okay? Uh, because they were living under my household. So we opted, and my sisters agreed, for my wife and I, we agreed to do that 100%, uh, Gene, 100%, move in to take care of mom and dad. 
so they wouldn't lose their Medicaid status because they were on oxygen, they were on nebulizers, all kinds of uh, medical equipment that they had at the house. So they, but once they died, we had to move. Now, I got this big mountain. I got to have electricity in my name because my house was in my mom's name, uh, my dad's name as far as electricity stuff. I had this big mountain. And what I did, I sat down at the table, I prayed, God, I got this big mountain, this $1,000 light bill, over $1,000. And I prayed and I called the electric company. They asked for my information, asked for my social security number, and all this kind of stuff. And they said, Mr. Lilly, we want to cancel that thousand dollar debt. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, what electric company would do that? Without God. They canceled it. They did away with it. They wiped it off the books. Now, uh, I had to get the address where we were moving to. And uh, based on the previous occupant of the place that we were moving into was how much our electricity was going to be. And, and we had to pay We had to pay a deposit. So you got to pay a deposit one time. We'll just add so much each month for six months on the, for the deposit. And after one year, if you pay your bill on time, you'll get all your deposit back. Wow. Amen. But I'm sitting at this table with my wife and we're praying. I got this big map. The enemy blew that mountain up in my life. Electric bill. The enemy blows things up in your life. Whatever it might be. I, it's so big. How can I get at this mountain out of my life? How can I move this mountain? How can we get rid of this? Jesus. It could, it could be whatever your situation is. But somebody needs to hear this tonight. I sat there at a table, tears running down my cheeks with the lady said, we're canceling that debt. We don't have to worry about that debt. Amen. It's gone. Lord, Amen. 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 And I'm still with that electric company today. Amen. In a different location than where I was living at the time. But I'm, in, I'm still with the same electric company, praise God. I got good standings with the electric company, yes, praise God. Because. That's not her or her. Let me tell you, I, I go another step further. I get, Lord, why am I getting my personal stuff? In 2010, we came out of bankruptcy. Thank you, Jesus. And you know when you go through bankruptcy, your credit is zero. Five, 500 or something, maybe. We had an old vehicle. It was wore out. Almost 200,000 miles on it. And one night I was praying and I went online to a car dealership in Smithfield. Mm. And you know, we went in there and talked to them on Labor Day of 2010. And do you know, I bought a vehicle, I had to pay a little higher interest now, but I bought a vehicle from that dealership and a company that I filed bankruptcy on financing. With no money down. Now, I didn't get it for 5% interest now. I had to pay higher interest for that. But the van you see my wife driving in Winston was the van that we bought in 2010. Wow. A brand new vehicle with no money down. Drove off a lot with that vehicle. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That's God. So whatever your mountain is, give it to God. Yes. There's power in your tongue, praise God. Yes. To speak death or to speak life. Amen. Lord, it's a, I pray there's not any other uh, personal stuff I need to share tonight. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 4 8. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. Yes. Yes. There's nothing negative in that scripture. And we face negativity every day of our life. Yes. Amen. On the TV, on the radio, co-workers at work, neighbors, friends we run in, in, into Walmart, into the shopping centers. 
negative, 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 negative. We need to think on the positive things of life. Yes, yes. yes Mark 11, 23. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done. Wow. Boy. Amen. Amen. Nothing negative in that scripture. <laughs> All power. Let's, let's read that again. Let's, take, let's slow down. Truly I say to you, whoever, who is whoever? All of us. Everyone. Yeah. You just watching. You just sitting in the tabernacle. Every, whoever says to this mountain, mm. be taken up and thrown into the sea mm. and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done to him. Amen. How many mountains that's growing together ministry had in the last two and a half years? But God. But God. But God. How many mountains have you had in your life in the last yes. two years? Yes, or one year? But God. Faith. We all have faith. We're all given a measure of faith. Yes. Well, I don't have the faith of sister so-and-so. Listen. It says the faith the size of a mustard seed. You know how small a mustard seed is? Yes. I wish I'd bought some mustard seed tonight. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. Lord. Yeah. Amen. So that's all you need to move the whatever mountain that you're going through in your life, whatever you're facing in your life, amen. Whether your spouse knows about it or your children know about it or whatever, if it's a secret, amen. Whatever mountain you're facing, God can move it if you believe what this one scripture here in Mark eleven twenty three says, praise God. The mountain can be moved out of your life, praise God. Glory to God. Whatever you're facing. We're going to talk about Abraham now. In, in, in uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. It, it goes right along when I just read the other scriptures I just read. In Romans 4, 17 it says, Now this is, this is when God's talking to Abraham, Okay? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before whom, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall your seed be. Now let's stop just a minute before I read further. Abraham was almost a hundred years old. Almost a hundred years old. Praise God. One hundred years old. Yes. Now you, uh, pardon me if I go off camera for just a minute, but I'm going to stand right here. This is a mustard seed. In this little little bottle right here, mm. you can barely see it. So, pardon me as I walk out. I want the, I want the people in the congregation to see this mustard seed. See that seed in the bottom of, the, of that jar? Huh? You see it? Yeah, I see it. You see that mustard seed now? Preach, Pastor. Preach. See it? See it? See that little seed? You know. See that seed seed in the bottom of that jar? Mm -hmm. Want see that seed? See that seed in the bottom of that jar? Small. Wow. Brother George, see that seed? Oh, yeah. Sister back here on the back? Yes. See that seed? Can you see it? Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. That is tiny. See that seed? 
Iya. This scripture in Mark 11, 23 says, if you have faith the size of your mustard seed, that much faith. That's all you need. Look how small that is. Yes. That mountain, you can speak to the mountain. I'm not talking about a literal, ma literal, a literal mountain out here like in the western part of North Carolina and uh, New York and all the different places and so forth, California, whatever, or Oregon. You're, the mountain in your life. The mountain that, that you're facing in your life, and it, it looks like you're the dead end with your walk with God. It looks like uh, all hope is gone. Everything's uh, all messed up in your life. Faith the size of a mustard seed. And we all have that kind of faith. Everyone that's listening tonight, everyone in the tabernacle, we have that type of faith, praise God. Now, God tells Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Now, I know what I would be doing, possibly, and you too. Men, you're 100 years old. Your wife's 90 years old. You're around scratching your head. How in the world can I be the father of nations? That part of my life is gone and it's over. That part of Sarah's life is over. And we'll read a little bit later on about that particular situation. And he said, you're going to be the father of many nations. And God speaks things to us, and, 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 and when He does speak things to us, it, it, it don't sound clear. All right. Come on, it sounds foolish. Jesus. God, do you know what you're talking about? He speaks things to us. Here we read a little bit further in Romans chapter. Four. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. In other words, he was no longer able to bear to uh, to have children. And even yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Her womb was dead. She was not physically able to have a child. But God says you're going to be the father of many nations. Mm. If you go back and read, uh, go back in the Old Testament and read that when the angels came to the tent uh, and Abraham was sitting in the door of the tent and, and they began to speak to him about Sarah having a baby, the Bible says that she laughed. Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> And most women probably would, amen. Yes. Yes. And, and you that are past that age would with life also. Come on. Yes. But that's when the angel says, is anything too hard for God? No. 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 There's nothing too hard for God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Nothing too hard for God to do, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. And we know that, that it, well, let's go on. I, the scriptures don't say, but I can see if, if Abraham has shared that story to some of his friends, they were going around. He's, he's lost his mind. Uh -huh. so. There ain't no way he can have a child. Man, he's really lost. I'm not saying he shared it, but said the Bible don't say what they did. But if he did, if he had to share it with some of his friends, put yourself in that situation. God spoke to you that's over 60. Mm -hmm. yes. That your wife's going to have a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Can, can you, can, can, listen. Sarah heard what the angel told Abraham. But guess what? Abraham had to do what he needed to do for her to become pregnant. At 100 years old, praise God. But God promised that to them. And whatever God has promised you, if you believe it, amen, he will bring it to pass. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because yes. God did whatever he had to do to the body of Abraham for him to be able to do what he had to do to Sarah for that child to come to this earth. Praise God. 
Amen. Preach it. Preach it. That's the kind of God that we serve, praise God. Preach it. Yes. Preach it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Faith. The size of that seed you just saw just a minute ago. We got it. We got it. But see, this is what happens in your mind, sometimes my mind. Well, God will do it for her, or God will do it for him, but he won't do it for me. Hogwash. He will. Yes, Lord. Yes, you have that faith. He is no respecter of person. And I don't care what position a person holds in the church, from the apostle, the bishop, or yeah. whatever right on them, or a lay person in the church, amen. We all have our human flaws. Yes. Preach it. Yes. Preach it. Yes. 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 There are times where you or I may, may fall asleep at night and then read our Bible. Come on. Preach it. But see, when, when God wants to begin to move in your life, the enemy is going to remind you of your faults and why God won't answer your prayer. Preach it. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. Preach it. Thank you. But God will, according to his word, answer your needs, glory to God. Come on, Bishop. The 12 disciples that he picked for many disciples, they all were full of flaws, amen. But they're the ones that God said, you, James. John, Peter, and all the ones that was picked to be the 12 disciples. Amen. Yes. They were all messed up. All right. Like we are. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Right. I tell people sometimes, you think I'm messed up now, you should have saw me before I got saved. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And it shows them, look, look what Peter come out, turned out to be. Thank you, Jesus. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Saul, all messed up, killing Christians, yes. uh, and the stoning of Stephen, amen. But look at the books that he wrote in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, praise God. Look what God did in his life. He does the same thing for you and I. Come on. Amen. Preach. 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 Well, we might not be able to preach like Paul or Peter, amen, but we're called to be a, 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 a disciple for the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, whether you're a lay person or you're a preacher, amen, no. to do what God has called us to do, glory to God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's what the word says, praise God. Amen. Amen. Faith, putting our faith without works is dead, the scripture says. Amen. You've got to put the faith to work. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, I did something yesterday I hadn't been in a long time. I, I didn't do as much as others did. Out there with that shovel shoveling rock. Mm. And guess what? This side right here is hurting, and this side right here hurts. You know why? Because I've been exercising some muscles that hadn't worked for a while. Yes. Yes. Some of you need to exercise your faith. Come on, preach Put it to work. Amen. Amen. And see what God will do in your life. Hallelujah. Put that faith Hallelujah. to work this week and come back next Thursday night and testify what yes. God did between this Thursday and next Thursday. Praise God. And you that are watching online, you put that online tonight, amen, and later on in the week, you put that faith to work, amen, and you go online, amen, and click, amen, and put a comment and tell us what God did in your life because you put that faith to work that God has given you. Yes, hallelujah. We all have it. Yes. Amen. But the devil is all try trying to accuse you of why he will not work in your life. Yes, Lord. That's right. Mm -mm -mm. Use them, Holy Ghost. Let's read it a little bit further. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In verse 21. 20. Oh, verse 20. 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Amen. When God has spoke to you that he's going to do something in your life, we can't stagger. Amen. 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 He didn't waver. He stood silent upon what God God said. This I'm going to believe it. Lord. Amen. <laughs> I heard this many, many many years ago. I'm not going to call his name, but there's a preacher as well known. If I call his name, you would know who I'm talking about. I'm not saying I agree with everything he preaches, everything he does, but I'm going to share this with you. He started out 
in, in the assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. Pentecostal preacher. He's independent today. And he started out, he said, driving the old, beat up Toyota ramp, ramp, ramp. And one day he's driving down the highway, and God says, Look up. And he looked up, and a jet was landing into the airport. And God spoke to him and said, I'm going to give you a jet for you to travel wow. for the gospel of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he's on four jets. Now, I'm not saying I agree with everything, but what I'm saying was, in the testimony that I read years and years ago, he said, I made a mistake and told some people at church what God has spoke to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the ridicule and the doubt and the mockery that I went through from through, through people that were church folks. Mm -hmm. so. Man, God's not going to do that for you. There's some things we need to keep to our mouth. Our Amen. Come on, man. We don't need to tell everybody. Amen. I can tell some people, but yes. some, some people is not at the same level in God that you are. Amen. Come on. Amen on that. He did not stagger or waver mm -hmm. at the promise that God had given him. Amen. Amen. In verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he, oh my God, had promised, he was able also to perform. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his own his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, mm -hmm. to whom it shall be imputed. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank if you. we believe on him, we'll raise up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Mm -hmm. I've gone far enough. Preach it. Put your faith to work. Yes, sir. Yes. The faith the size of a mustard seed. We all have. Yes. Everyone is watching live or physically in this building. We have, you have faith. Amen. We've got to put it to work. Amen. We've got to exercise it. Amen. I can get in here and I can do my jumping jacks. Not me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can touch my nose. Not today. Wow. And guess what? My body will let me know tomorrow what I've done. <laughs> Why? Because I don't do it every day. I don't do those exercises every day. Amen. amen. Praise God. So, amen. So, exercise your faith. Yes, Lord. Put it to work. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday morning around 12 noon Eastern time. God bless you.